Hey there, and welcome to the WeWorks world. Today, I want to show you how I personally go on about creating an adventure for my players. This will be a multi-part series that, while not intended to be absolute, still can serve as a guideline for when you are stuck in your own creative process or don't know where to start. This is not a video about how to write a story, though. There are a lot of those out there already that I'll wholeheartedly recommend and who cover this specific topic better than I ever could. I will link them down in the description. What I want to do is to give you a more general approach without too much theory behind it, as well as give you a glimpse into how I personally work. I will try to be system agnostic with this, just illustrating the process creating a story rather than a specific system. However, if I feel the need to illustrate with examples further down the line, I will be using Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition as an example, although I will try to keep this to a minimum. In this episode, I will go over how I get my basic ideas for an adventure and how you can create hooks that pull your group right into it. If you have any questions about my process or want input for your ideas, tell me in the comments below. Also, if you find this video helpful, consider giving it a like, subscribing to my channel, you know the deal. It really helps me out by showing me what kind of content you like. But with all that being said, let's go. Oh, and if you are wondering which tool I'm using to make the map in the background, it's Incarnate. The link is down in the description. They don't sponsor this video, but if anyone watches this and wants to make it happen, I'm available. To start with, you just need a small notion of where you want to go. It doesn't have to be fully fleshed out, just a general feel where you want to go with your adventure. Personally, I usually get ideas either by thinking about cool scenes that I'd like my players to experience or from whatever it was that I last read or watched. Could be a novel, a series or a movie, anything really. Your idea can be as general as I want my players to be in a forest or as specific as already having certain NPCs and situations in mind that they will encounter during the adventure. What's important is that you have a scene to start with, no matter where in the story it's set. From there on, just allow your mind to wander. Personally, I like to put on some music to fit the mood and just daydream about what could happen. If my players are in a forest, maybe some calm, relaxing music would be fitting, or something more sinister and foreboding, should that forest be haunted, with danger lurking at every corner. But in this case, I want a more friendly kind of forest, one that feels inviting to relax in, so let's put some music on, befitting that. Perfect. Incidentally, most of the music I use I take from Tabletop Audio, a link to that will be in the description as well. If you find it hard to let your mind wander like that or just can't get in the mood, you can always try other methods, of course. Mind maps are an excellent tool to achieve pretty much the same effect. You start from one idea, say a forest, and work from there, branching out into different things that can happen in a forest. Animals and plant monsters, old ruins, anything that crosses your mind. Just write it down for now. We'll get to the process of making it more relevant later. A pretty old joke goes that ideas are like farts. If you have to force them, they are shit. In that vein, try to let your thoughts flow, but if you feel like you are straining to come up with anything new, take it as a sign that you probably have enough resources to work with. Maybe take a break and come back later if what you have feels a little barren, but don't overdo it. Especially if you are new with writing your own adventures. Creativity is like a muscle in that you can train it. And training means going as far as you can comfortably and then just the right amount further. And soon enough, this will be your new comfort zone. And just one last tip if you still feel that what you have is not enough. There is a quote often attributed to the Spanish artist Pablo Picasso. A good artist copies, a great artist steals. I sure am glad that I thought of phrasing it like that. But jokes aside, whether Picasso actually said it or not, it segues nicely into my last piece of advice for this. Don't be afraid to look for inspiration in the things you like. Be it books, series, games. Think about where you want to go and how others already did it. Copying these ideas word for word is not a good idea, but looking at what they do right is. And maybe stealing a little is okay too. Just don't overdo it. 
So, what do I have? As I said, I normally daydream, so I'm just imagining a group of adventurers going through a nice forest, one like I often went to as a kid. The weather is nice, birds are singing, and just a bit in the distance you can hear the murmur of a calm, refreshing river. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But why would hardened adventurers be here, and what kind of danger could they encounter? Let's talk about the why first. Before we talk about how to hook your players into your adventure, now is the time to trim the basic idea a little bit. I find that this goes nicely with creating a hook, or even multiple hooks for the group to join your adventure, as you want to think about what exactly it is your adventure should be about. What is at stake? Will they rescue someone? Escort a group of civilians, maybe? Or are they in the forest to find some old ruins that are probably laden with treasure? When you ask yourself questions like this, some of the ideas you already had suddenly become way more important, while others take a step back. Maybe you even get whole new ideas, which is great. Just make a quick note of them, mentally or physically. I like to think about my players when I write a hook to individualize them a bit to suit the characters. But let's say we want to keep it a bit more general so that you can reuse your adventure later or even give it to other GMs. In that case, it always pays to have multiple ways the group can join the adventure. I usually try to go for four different ideas, which all cover a different motivation for adventure. Your group can do it for the sake of glory, in which case maybe an important figure or someone they care about asks them to help with a problem. They may be out for treasure, in which case a rumor about some ancient ruin with presumed riches will do nicely. Or they may want to explore, in that case, an ancient ruin with some presumed riches also works great, but maybe give it a bit more of a background story that lends itself to being explored. How about a forgotten temple of an unknown god? And finally, you can always think of your adventure as part of a larger module, in which case maybe there is some lead regarding the bigger plot that forces them to detour. So, there you have it. Four plot hooks that may just work, and one of them even gave us a little more to work with. Ancient Ruins. That idea pops up again and again in my stream of consciousness, so let's jot it down to work with it later. Of course, all these hooks lead to the same story, so now that we know what our adventure will be set in a forest that hides some ancient ruins, let's think about what kind of ruins they are. This may seem like a detour at first, but it will help with refining the hooks for the adventure. Since it is a peaceful forest, I'd imagine that the ruins once were a temple dedicated to a goddess of nature. She was adored by her worshippers, and people came from far and wide to praise her and shower the temple with precious gifts to show their love and appreciation. But as time went on, fewer and fewer people visited the temple, until it was finally left in disrepair and the last priests died, not having found anyone to succeed them. Some of the treasure remains, though. If you cannot improvise a story like that yet, you can try to remember something you read or saw in a movie once and slightly alter it. As I said before, it's okay to take inspiration from elsewhere, just don't make it too obvious. In future episodes, we'll also talk about how to refine that basic idea, but for the hook, it doesn't need to be great. Just go with it for now. I'll just make the four hooks a bit more individualistic for now. If your group is looking for glory, then reclaiming an important relic from the temple sounds like a good idea. Not for its monetary value, but for how it would inspire those who still believe in said goddess. If they want money, all the treasure they find along the way is theirs, as well as a nice reward for returning that relic. Most of the time, exploration is its own reward, so if you want to hook your players with that, we'll get into how to make the story more interesting later on. For now, it is just a basic hook, but we'll define more about the temple later. And finally, if you want to make this adventure just a small detour for a larger plot, well, all the more opportunities for you to play around with ideas. Did an antagonist flee into the temple for whatever reason? Do they need the goddess's help? Or maybe they just feel that they aren't ready for the next big step yet and want to gather more resources, which is also a good idea. But with that being said, 
We have four good hooks now we can use to get our group into the adventure. Remember though that these hooks are just suggestions and can and should be at least a little individualized. But I find that this general freeform approach works really well for me and I hope that you can learn something from it as well. Look how far we've come, from no idea at all to a mysterious temple in a forest just waiting to be explored. Next time we will see how we can fill this temple with a bit more life and decide on what kind of dangers our group will face. If you have any suggestions, questions or comments be sure to tell me in the comments. Also check out the videos about storytelling I linked as well as the rest of my channel. I really appreciate it. Until next time, see you soon.